Do you love small two-player abstract games that are really quick to teach, easy to play, but have a surprising amount of depth and challenge? Well, stay tuned, because we are going to look at one beautiful Nepalese-themed board game. Hey dude, look what I found. Is it a giant green tea bag? No silly, it's actually a game inside a really small bag. The sequel to Hive Pocket Edition? No, it's actually a beautiful two-player Nepalese game that fits right inside your pocket. Look, I've stuffed my pockets with all these other tiny games. I'm sure it'll fit. Bag Chal is an ancient Nepalese two-player game of predator vs prey that has been passed down from generation to generation and still to this day is played using sticks and stones or if you prefer, online. Bag Chal is also known as the Moving Tigers game where one player dons their stripes and takes on the role of the tiger and the other player the goat. The main goal of the game is simple. The tigers need to be able to capture five goats by jumping over them checker style, while the goats need to fill up the holes on the board and outnumber and trap the tigers so that they can no longer move. Whichever player satisfies their condition first wins the game. The game plays in two main phases. In the first phase, the tigers start at the corner of this beautifully printed fabric valley board. On the goat player's turn, they start by placing goat pieces from their supply and position them strategically on the board. On the tiger's turn, the tiger player moves one of their four tigers one space along any connected line. If there is a goat, however, in their way, they can leap over them and capture them, provided that there's an empty space on the other side. I mean, who said it was always greener there? Unless you are a tiger, that is. Players continue maneuvering this way until the goat player has placed out all of their pieces. In phase two, the goat player shifts into high gear and tries to surround each of the tiger player's tiger so that they have no moves left. At the same time, the tiger player is continuing to capture up to five goats. Each time a goat is captured, this creates a hole in the game map, giving the tiger player a greater and greater advantage. The shifting sands and jostling to and fro creates a really cool game dynamic worth exploring. On the other side of the map is a mountain waiting to be discovered. Pule Mika is a similar game, yet the structure of the game map is more precarious and non-symmetrical. Here players only use three tigers and less goats, so now the game is more open and opportunistic. The two maps that are included with the game provide for some interesting geographical challenges for players to try and navigate. It also creates some interesting variety and they feel incredibly different. The original game features a series of triangles where players are moving orthogonally and also diagonally and you get this sense that in the original game the tigers are kind of closing or the goats are kind of herding around the tigers to prevent them from moving. This particular map is probably my favorite because it has a really kind of symmetrical feel to it where you do feel like you're on this open field or open forest and then you're slowly moving and stalking your prey. The other side of the handkerchief has a completely different geographical design. You've got quadrilaterals now, and all the diagonal movements in this version of the map have been removed. And this creates for some cool dynamics. Often you'll find that you're rotating or moving around the four corners of the quadrilaterals. Um, you'll also find that these edge pieces, sometimes you can feel like you can get stuck in those corners. So you've got to be careful what sort of strategy you do employ in this particular version of the game. I often feel like that the mountain side of the game does promote for some more aggressive play. The tigers in this game actually move checker style as they try to capture the goats by leaping directly over them and eating them right into their belly. Thus moving the tigers into a position and trying to force the goat player into a spot where there is an open space on the other side of a goat is a really crucial strategy to employ in this game. And sometimes it does come down to making sure that the goat player doesn't see a potential move that they need to make to protect one of their goats. The asymmetry in the way the tigers move is really interesting. And it really comes down to trying to set up the board in a way where the tigers do have an advantage and that can be incredibly challenging to do. If uh, can you move? 
I need to get out of the studio. I'll only let you do it if you can find a way to leap over me first. In my experiences with this game, playing as the GOAT player feels like there's a lot more breadth and depth to the range of different strategies that you can employ and explore throughout each game. For example, moving the GOATs into each of the four corners of the main game board means that the Tigers can't capture those four GOATs because Tigers can't leap at right angles. Also, you could blockade the Tigers into the four corners if you've got two pairs of goats so that those Tigers are nullified, meaning that you could reduce the amount of Tigers that the Tiger player can use to move around the board, thereby securing the safety of your goat population. And finally, as the goat player, you're really trying to fill in the holes so that you're limiting the amount of choice that the Tiger player has in terms of moving around the map by having pairs of goats together in the same line will limit the tiger's movement and choice and that's what you really want to do to try and constrict the game down. I really like how this game shifts and moves and sways and evolves as players kind of move their pieces around the board. It does really evoke that sense that you're kind of being stalked by this predator. Tiger, tiger, burning bright. So overall, Bag Child is a beautiful coffee table game that has components that are worth admiring and showing off. It is a really easily accessible game, especially for new players or people who want to play casually on the side and have some scones and tea while they enjoy their afternoon. It is a charming, challenging and very calculated game that is really tricky to master, especially if you're playing against someone with the same experience level. A point to consider is that if you are playing with someone who has played it a lot of times, there does feel like there's a little bit of imbalance there because a person who has more experience with the game knows some of the really good strategies that they need to get out of the bat and to set up the game board for a win. Also, some people might find that the asymmetry in the game is probably not as interesting as it could be. I mean, playing as the GOAT player for me feels far more fun than playing as the Tiger player because I've got a little bit more scope for options of where I can place my GOAT and how I can maneuver them across each of the maps. So that's something to consider. Wow, board games are getting smaller and smaller these days. Thanks once again for making it so far in this video. I absolutely appreciate the immense amount of support that I get on this channel. If you really want to support this channel even further, I'd really appreciate it if you head over to my Patreon page and join over there. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you uh, for another Board Game Sanctuary video in the future. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. This is Danny Sanya. See you later.